Welcome to another video. Let's do some mathematical induction. If you study mathematics, you will understand that there are many different ways to prove a statement or what you call a conjecture. The fact that you can see it or you, you can feel it does not mean it is always true. So the statement I have on the board that n, a natural number, is always less than or equal to 2 raised to power n minus 1, you will notice that if you test it with some numbers, starting from n equals 1 to 2 to 3, the statement is true. But you cannot just accept the conjecture that what you're saying is true. That's why mathematics is the most trusted of all the sciences. Because, you see, science tries to predict the future based on what is observed now or try to have a conjecture of what happened in the past based on what you see now. But a lot of times those things are not correct. It's just a guess based on the present. But in mathematics, if we say something is proven, it is proven. Okay, that's the beauty of math. You should trust math more than you trust any other science. So, when we say something, it's called a conjecture. So this is a conjecture, but we want to prove it, that if you have natural numbers, any natural number you pick will be less than or equal to 2 raised to power n minus 1, where n is the natural number. And we do this, one of the ways of making doing a mathematical proof is by mathematical induction. And I'm going to show you what happens. The reason I picked this is because it's an inequality, and it's harder because... It's not an equation that you can move things around easily. You have to think a bit carefully before you start moving things around. So, let's get into the video. So there are about three or four steps you need to take when you do mathematical induction. The first thing is to state what you want to show. Okay, so this is what we want to do. Um, the general pro proposition, so we have our proposition for n, okay, is that, I'm going to write it this way, is such that we want to say n is less than or equal to 2 raised to power n minus 1 for any natural number. So let's write it as n, let's put it here, n is in the set of natural numbers, okay? It has to be a natural number. What are natural numbers? The numbers you can count. They're also called counting numbers. So zero is not included. It's just one, two, three, four, and you keep going like that. So what is the first step? The first step is to test. Let's start from the smallest number you know, because the smallest number is the easiest number to test. So we're going to test this. So let's do our proposition is to test for n is equal to 1. If n equals 1, what do we have? We're going to have 1 is less than or equal to 2 raised to power 1 minus 1. What is 2 raised to power 1 minus 1? That's 0. This is equal to 2 raised to power 0, which is equal to 1. So 1 is less than or equal to 1. And remember, as a logical statement, whenever you have or, you only need one part of it to be true. So 1 is equal to 1. That's true. Okay, maybe that's too small a number. You can test another number. Okay, let's just try another number. Let's say P, let's do two. N equals two. So the proposition says that if we have two here, two is less than or equal to two raised to power two minus one. Well, two raised to power two minus one is two raised to power one, and this is equal to two. Or well, we got a similar um, result here because we got 2 is equal to 2. Let's try another number. Let's try 3. So we have the proposition for n equals 3. And what does it say? It says 3 is less than or equal to 2 raised to power 3 minus 1. That is 2 raised to power 2. What is 2 raised to power 2? It's equal to 4. So 3, now the option is 3 is less than 4. So we've tested enough numbers in our sequence of natural numbers we can now say if we continue this we just keep going we just we're just going to get 
we're just going to keep getting good numbers that satisfy this, right? So we can, as a conjecture, we can just say this is always true. But in mathematics, we can't claim it's always true. We have to prove it is always true. So what we do is we're going to say, let us assume that we have used so many numbers and we're tired. We want to go to bed. And that number is K, like 174 billion and seven. Okay, that is our K. And it is true. We want to prove that the next number after that, it will also be true. And the number after that, if it is true for that number that is next, it will be true for the one that's next and then the one next. As long as it's true for this, it has to be true for the next one. And that's the purpose of mathematical induction. So what do we say? Now we're going to say, assume it is true for n is equal to k. So there's a number in the future, k. It is true for everything we've tested until that point, but we want to retire. We don't want to continue because we think it's true. So let's assume it is true for k. We need to prove that it is true for the number after k, which is k plus 1. We don't know what k is, and we don't know what k plus 1 is. So we're going to say the proposition for n equals k is such that k is less than or equal to 2 raised to power k minus 1, let's say, is true. This is the assumption. You see how we said this is true, this is true, this is true. We're going to also assume that when we get to k, it is true. But the, our mission is to show that k plus 1 is also true. And this is where it gets tricky. So now, what about the proposition? for n is equal to k plus 1. Well, it will be such that instead of writing k, we're now going to write k plus 1, which is a number we don't know in the future. At this point, I'm going to make a claim. And the claim is that if this is k plus 1, I can write 2 raised to power. You see how we used to put k here? I'm going to put k plus 1 here and then write minus one. This is what I want to show is going to happen, but I don't know this is true. So I'm going to put a question mark here because there's a big question mark there. You don't know that it's always true. Is this a true statement? Well, we don't know. Well, because this is inequality, that's why it gets a bit tricky. We don't know if this is true, but there's something we can do. Now watch what I'm about to do. If I make a claim and I say that 3 is less than or equal to 4, let's, let me use 5. This is a true statement, okay? But if I want to brag about it, I'm going to say, you know what? Just to prove to you that 3 is less than 5, I can even make this 5 smaller. If I make this 5 smaller, 3 will still be less than what is left. That's so true. Because if 3 is less, less than something less than 5, then 3 is less than 5. Look, if 3 is less than or equal to 4, and 4 is less than or equal to 5, then clearly, this is the, called the transitive property, this actually is less than 5. It's obvious. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try and reduce the right-hand side, make it smaller, and then compare it to k plus 1. If it is still smaller, then it means what I had originally was true. So when you have inequality, what you can do is make this bigger or make this smaller. If you make this smaller and this, the statement is still true, then you have proven what you're trying to prove. Okay, that's how you work through inequalities generally. So let's finish this up. Let's simplify this. k plus 1 minus 1 is going to be just 2 to the k because 1 minus 1 is 0, so this is 2 to the k. Okay, so what I'm claiming now is that k plus 1 is less than or equal to 2 to the k. Okay, how do I make life easy? Let's go back. This is always essential. If you don't use this in your proof, you have not done the proof. You're lying. 
or you made stuff up. You have to use this statement. So how do I get something from this statement? Well, it looks like I can go here and say, since k is less than or equal to, you see, 2 to the k minus 1 is the same thing as 2 to the k divided by 2, right? Half of 2 to the k. Do you see that? That's what this means. Laws of exponents. Now it means I can write this as 2k is less than 2 to the k. This implies that 2k is less than or equal to 2 to the k. And remember what I said. The original plan when you're dealing with inequalities is to reduce the bigger side. And if the left hand side is still um, less than what you get ultimately, then you know the original was actually bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this smaller. How do I make this smaller? Well, I just had an inequality here. If I make this smaller or equal, 2k can replace this. And the worst is it makes it smaller, which is good for what I'm planning to do, because now I can say from this that k plus 1 is less than or equal to, I'm going to replace 2k with, I mean 2 to the k with 2k. I hope this makes sense. So I have reduced the right hand side, or at least I've made it the same, and this statement is true. If I take k to the other side, what do I get? I get 1 is less than or equal to 2k minus 1k, and that gives me k. Now, this statement is always true. How do I know it's always true? Because the smallest natural number is 1. So nobody can argue that 1 is less than or equal to k. Remember, all the numbers we're dealing with are natural numbers, and the smallest of them is 1. So this thing that looks really crazy, you've cleaned it up to look like this. So you can conclude by induction By mathematical induction, n is less than or equal to 2 to the n minus 1 for all n in the set of natural numbers. Done. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.